Hey everyone, Casey here. Today I just wanted to have a quick chat to you about recovery because recovery is as important as actually exercising. Without it, we wouldn't be able to continue a regular exercise routine or it may be the difference between you continuing on a regular exercise routine and letting it go because your body just feels so tired and sore all the time. So I'm hoping this video helps you develop your own um, ritual for recovery. So recovery can be done in a couple of ways. Um, there's a million things that can help, but I just wanted to show you the simple things and things you could be doing each day to improve your recovery or things you can put more effort into on a rest day. So let's start with a rest day. Now a rest day isn't a day where you don't exercise, you chill out on the couch, you do the bare minimum. Your body is gonna achieve nothing from that. So a rest day is just when you take a step back, you pay attention to the fact that your body might be sore or you're feeling tired or maybe your sleep hasn't been great. So you pull back a bit on the exercise. So you still probably want to be getting your 10,000 steps. You might want to go for a light swim. It might mean a yoga session or a Pilates session, something that's a little bit more gentle on your body. But you want to keep moving, whatever that might be. So in your rest day, you could incorporate some foam rolling, some massage and some stretching. So if you've got a foam roller here, these are really easy to get um, to help break up the fascia of your body, so you can start at your head, work your way down, um, and just massage balls too that, I mean, we have a lot. We've got a whole basketball. So you can get them with all sizes, all shapes, all weird, crazy things, and use those to get into the spots that are quite sore, find the point, sort of massage into that point, nice deep breaths where you do it, and you'll start to feel it all relax. So you should foam roll and massage before you stretch, just because it gives your fascia time to release. Well, that's going to release the fascia. Um, if you just jump straight into stretching, sometimes those stiffer points will stay tight through the stretch, so you won't really get the benefit from that. So when you're thinking about it, you wanna think foam roll, then stretch. Um, if it's a workout day, if you've got time, you wanna foam roll, then workout, then foam roll, then stretch and that should help keep everything nice and, and loose. Uh, the next thing is cold and heat therapy. So anyone that knows me knows I'm obsessed with sauna. Um, sauna has been proven to be great for recovery because it releases heat shock proteins and these proteins help repair damaged proteins in the body um, and, and protect them against oxidative stresses and damage. Um, so I try to sauna when we're not in lockdown for 20 minutes at at least 80 degrees, um, usually four to six times a week, um, during lockdown, can't use the sauna. So at least a 20 minute bath, that's quite hot and that makes me sweat. I don't love bathing, but I'm trying to enjoy it more. Um, so I try to do that at least twice a week. And cold therapy is great for recovery as well. Um, so cold therapy works with your sympathetic nervous system, so your fight or flight. Um, and when you're in the cold, your um, the blood pumps harder to take the blood away from, your heart pumps harder to, to pull the blood away from your extremities, take it to your organs so, so they stay the right temperature. Through this, your heart rate increases um, and your breathing increases, you, the power needed by your lung increases, and all this helps to boost the sympathetic control of the cardiovascular system and your overall improves your recovery processes as well. So um, you can use a shower for this, you could use cold baths, you can use the ocean. Um, a simple one would be with each shower, try and have one to two minutes just in the cold, focusing in on your breathing. The other thing you could do is a five minute shower, have 20 seconds of cold, 10 seconds of hot, and you'll get the benefits from that as well. Um, heat therapy can be done immediately after a workout, but with cold therapy, you wanna wait a couple of hours before you do that for your recovery. And the next thing is talking about magnesium. So 
it's quite a common thing for people to know about. Magnesium is pretty important in recovery. So magnesium is essential for um, our nerves, it's essential for our cardiac function, our muscle contractions and relaxations and protein formation. And it's part of the ATP energy process as well. So when you're deficient in magnesium, um, you might experience muscle cramps, uh, fatigue, you're, you'll just you'll have general more muscle soreness as well. Um, can impact your sleep as well, which is going to further impact your recovery. So topical magnesium is great. So this is an oil which you spray on. This is a cream you rub in. Much or muchness, um, or having baths with magnesium salts best. So ingesting it is still good, but topical um, and and the bathing in the magnesium just helps you absorb it a lot lot better. And then hydration, so making sure you're hydrated. So quite often if you have had a sweaty day, lots of workouts, um, the next day you might feel really fatigued, lethargic, could be to do with hydration. And not just replacing water, but you need to replace electrolytes. So I replace electrolytes using Celtic sea salt. So I just put a little bit in my water bottle or in a soda stream to have a little bit of the bubbles. Um, you can use something like a hydrolyte. Um, there's also different brands on the market, but I find the salt is enough. Um, and then I know I'm not having anything sweet with it. Um, and it's just a tiny little bit, but you wanna make sure it's a good quality salt so it actually has the mineral content in it that is gonna be good for your recovery. And the other thing nutrition wise is making sure you've got protein. So having protein in all your meals and snacks is important because it helps repair your muscles, helps build muscle. So protein's a really important uh, macronutrient in terms of recovery. And as I touched on before with the magnesium, sleep's super important. So if you're having continuously bad sleeps, your performance is gonna be lousy. You're gonna recover worse from each exercise session. So getting a ritual in place that optimizes your sleep is really important. And I will have a sleep video out for you soon. Um, so I track my recovery using an aura ring, which I wear every day and night. And it, the aura ring is to track recovery and to track sleep. So each day I wake up and it gives me a readiness score. And that score kind of helps me dictate how hard I'm gonna exercise or whether I'm gonna to commit to more of a recovery type day. And that's all based on things like my sleep score, my sleep balance, my exercise balance, um, my activities from the, the day before, my activity levels from the day before. Um, overnight, it's tracking my temperature, my heart rate, my heart rate variability. So if it starts to see a trend in my temperature and my heart rate increasing, but my heart rate variability decreasing, it's letting me know that I need to recover a little bit more. So that is an amazing tool. I can't recommend that enough. If you're someone who feels like you need to hone in on their recovery a little bit more. If you have any more questions on recovery, please comment below. Always happy to help. So make a goal to set up a little recovery ritual. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. Make it short, make it easy. Those little habits will help. And every little bit of foam rolling, every little bit of massage, Every spray of magnesium is going to help you, so just remember that. See ya!